This is what happens when I stop and talk to people. I run late. <laughs> and then the flame goes out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church where our mission is to walk with Christ and neighbor, healing brokenness together. And I'll let our young folks here light our candles this morning. My name is Pastor Toby White. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is just a joy to be with you all this morning. Uh, we are in our creation. Um, this is Creation Sunday. So instead of doing a series this month, we're just picking a Sunday. And so we'll be focusing on creation today. So let's begin by standing in honor of Christ and singing our gathering hymn, hymn number 879, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2, 4 and 5.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. We'll take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Friends, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We sing our hymn of praise, Kyrie eleison. The refrain, music refrain can be found on page 184 at the front of your hymnal. And the verses, well, actually, you have an insert. So you have all the verses listed out for you so you can follow along. God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, we are continuing our study of the TV series, The Chosen, after worship at 1015. So if you want to join us in watching a TV series about Jesus, which is really a really good series, um, head down the hall and join us in the Founders Room. Um, if you or your group have provided or are interested in providing feast meals, we are getting that back and rolling. So please consider gathering a group of people together and providing a short meal, a lunch. Um, we usually serve at 1130. And right now, the most that we have are about 10 to 15 people. So it's not a huge group and it's not overwhelming. Um, but please consider, um, so consider that so that Lindsay is not uh, <laughs> cooking all the time. Um, we do have a QPR suicide prevention training coming up on Saturday, this coming Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. If you've ever wondered, what do you say? What do you think? How do you respond when you think that someone is depressed or might be considering suicide? This is basically like CPR. Just It's for common people like all of us to be able to respond with empathy and care and actually make a difference in people's lives. So there is a registration, and you can find that on our website. And finally, well, not quite finally, um, Bells. Our OSLC Bells, um, we need a few more members so that we can do more fun projects. So if you have any musical ability, it, it really helps to be able to read music. That's a good start. Um, but then you're only responsible for like two notes, so, <laughs> which I'm oversimplifying, I know. Um, but talk to Sam if you're interested in perhaps ringing for us and, um, and being part of that team. Now last week, um, I, I often say during communion, um, wherever you are with whatever you have, to our ho folks at home, when they're, when they're taking communion, I say take and eat, wherever you are with whatever you have. And so one of our young people here turned to his parent and said, so does that mean we can have Oreos? And so he brought Oreos. But I'll have them out in the atrium for us for when you go out for coffee. <laughs> Please remember to check in using the registration pads or use our app to check in online so that we know that you are here and can follow up if you have any needs. So we have a choir anthem now. So let's rest, relax, and enjoy the gift of music. perfect introduction to our readings today. Our first reading is Psalm 8. 
O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as we sing our Alleluia verse. The music is found on page 188 at the front of your red hymnals. not from one of the gospel readings, but from Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 18 to 27. And he writes, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, for we have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. For the past few years, we've been doing like a whole creation series in the month of September, which then leads up to the festival of St. Francis in early October. Now, for those of you taking sermon notes, um, and I've asked that you identify three main points. I'm going to help you out a little bit. This could be point one, just the things we haven't done or need to do or what we have focused on in the past. We have focused in the past on trees and oceans and flowers and animals. And I've preached sermons on how poorly we have fulfilled our call as stewards of creation. 
and have talked about the true meaning of all those passages, like Psalm 8, that say humanity has been given dominion, and how we have abused, misused, misunderstood, and then destroyed so much of God's good and plentiful gift because of our greed, our desire for convenience, our insistence upon immediate gratification. And most of you have heard all this, and I doubt you really want to hear it again. And I'm really not in the mood to preach it. <laughs> we have it in our face constantly these days anyway. July being the hottest on record, and hurricanes, and wildfires, and tornadoes reaching catastrophic levels. And just because we don't feel that immediate effect right here, doesn't mean that it's not coming. And I've preached on all the things that we need to do. Decrease single-use plastic, reduce consumption, recycle, compost, use less gas. We all know these things. We all know it's difficult to do them. And those that live in rural communities have less access to some of those resources, like recycling, and are completely reliant on their vehicles to get anywhere because everything is so far away. Farm equipment has to be used, or the rest of the world does not have food. So we've created such a system in which there seems to be no way around the destruction that we have come to depend upon. And it feels quite hopeless if we dwell on it too much. It's not unlike the seemingly endless pandemic there are some who are doing everything they can to put an end to it, and there are some who refuse to take it seriously. And so it continues, despite all efforts to the contrary, destroying so many in its path. And if we lose hope that there is truly life on the other side of this, then all is lost. I wonder if that's what asylum seekers from Haiti are feeling as they're forced to return to the rubble of their homes. And maybe that's what citizens of Afghanistan are feeling as their last chance for freedom has left their country. And maybe that's what so many families and individuals are feeling as they struggle to make ends meet or struggle against abuse or struggle against the diagnosis of cancer. The pain in this world is real to the point where many of us wonder if there's anything left, anything to hope for. So now that you're all sufficiently depressed, <laughs> it's really not my intent. As someone who is challenged by depression and anxiety, those kind of thoughts can really worm their way into my mind, and they camp out there and set up for the long haul. But that kind of hopelessness is neither helpful nor true. So here's point number two, catechism students. All is not lost. And hope is alive. Paul writes that creation waits with eager longing, longing for the children of God to be revealed. Creation has been groaning in labor pains, anticipating the freedom of salvation. And two things from this passage are abundantly clear. First, labor pains mean life is on its way. Hope is what makes the pain endurable. And second, salvation isn't just for indivi individual people, but for all of creation. You'll, you'll see in the passage, I didn't put this in my sermon notes, um, you'll see in the passage that, God's, or that uh, Paul says, creation was subjected to, fut to futility and hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We are linked. If creation is to be set free, we are linked to that. If we are to be set free, creation comes along. We cannot be separated. Salvation is not an individual endeavor. It is an all or forget it. And that's good news, because the struggle that we all face is not the last word, but the process through which we see God's abundant and beautiful gift of grace. 
Now, in the past as well, I've often turned to Dr. Seuss's The Lorax, which most of you are probably familiar with, and I discuss the plight of creation and the trees and the, and the need to not use it all up. But today, I want to lift up a different Seuss book. Horton hatches an egg. <laughs> it begins with Maisie, a lazy bird hatching an egg. And she is bored with her task, and she wants instead to be out and about and to fly and play and be free from this responsibility of sitting on this egg all day and all night. And when she sees Horton, the elephant, she knows he is trustworthy and true. And so she asks him to mind her egg just for a bit. She'll be right back. But Maisie doesn't come back, not in a few hours or a few days or even a few weeks. And Horton, who has made this promise, does his best to care for this egg. And it becomes his sole focus. He is devoted to it. Through storms and snow, despite being laughed at and hunted and even gawked at then by circus goers. And as Maisie happens upon this circus where Horton has been taken, she recognizes him and she has the gall to accuse him of stealing her egg now that the work has been complete, of course. And then it hatches. And wouldn't you know, the little hatchling looks an awful lot like the one who had given his life for it, complete with a trunk and big ears and a tail. <laughs> now Horton didn't expect such a remarkable outcome. He only hoped for life at the end, whatever that life looked like, and he, but he knew he was responsible for it. Hope and responsibility go hand in hand. If we hope for something, we don't simply wait for someone else to make it happen. If we hope for it, we are also inspired to work toward it. Like expecting parents who purchase a crib and take birthing classes and do their best to keep themselves and their little one healthy. Like Horton, who withstood weather and humiliation for the sake of someone else's egg. Like us, who do what is in our power to care, not just for ourselves, but for one another. Though sometimes, or maybe often, it's inconvenient, it's challenging, even unpopular. All right, here comes number three for catechism students. We don't just wait for someone else to fix it. We don't wait for God to come rescue us from this mess. Not that that won't happen, but we don't need to wait. We don't wait also for just some hopeless and bitter end to the pain. And we don't wait for some optimistic, magical reversal to the damage we've done. We don't destroy our present and wait for some future in heaven. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, is near. It is here. And we have been called and commissioned and designed and created for the purpose of caring for it but not out of some works righteous piety. We're not asked to make everything perfect so that we can go to heaven someday. This isn't our job so that if we can check off those marks that God has looked on us and said, okay, I guess you've done enough. We're asked to do our best so that we can see the glimpses of heaven now, that we can sow the seeds of hope for what is to come. And so we wait in hope. And in this, hope means that we confess the ways in which we've gotten it wrong. It means that we work towards something better. It means that though there are no guarantees for the outcome, we do not lose heart. We do not forget God's love for us, for all of us. God's promise to us, to all of us, that death and destruction, war and greed, pandemics and disease do not have the last word. They do not determine our lives, our love, or our hope. One of my favorite scripture passage, 
passages is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since it is by God's mercy we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. It is by God's mercy that you and I are placed in this amazing and beautiful creation. It is by God's grace that we have been given this responsibility. It is by God's wisdom that we have this opportunity to do something good with the gifts God has given us. It is by God's love that we lean on each other when the going gets rough and the outcome looks dim. And it is in hope that we continue the good work before us. It is in hope that we do not lose heart. It is in hope that through the difficulties and afflictions, that which comes forth from our work will resemble the one who truly gave it life. Amen. So please stand in honor of Christ. The insert that you have for the healing of creation is merely the response. So I'll sing a piece of a verse, you respond with God renew. Then I'll sing the next petition and you respond with God renew. When we get to the refrain, I'll sing it once through and then you all will repeat it with me and then we'll begin the next verse. <laughs>
together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless those who dwell in hope and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of all that you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved, including elements of creation which have or which are vulnerable to humanity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, and any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. We lift up today Diana, Addie, Victoria, Mary Jo, Kathy, Lee, Miko, Patty, Susan, Samantha, Scotland, Amanda, Stephanie, Dawn, Kim, Dexter, Jill, Joshua, Dawn, Laura, our homebound, and those we lift up at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the servants of worship in this congregation, for ushers, technicians, altar guild, communion assistants, readers, acolytes, musicians, and in-person and online participants. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share God's peace with one another. As we gather back together, we remember the gifts that have been given us and offer our gifts to God and to the work that God offers. Whether you do it in a tangible way or online or in some other way that uses your gifts, we ask and, and pray over what we've given. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those of you at home, wherever you are, or with whatever you have, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And if you are at home, with whatever you have, take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as our communion assistants come forward to be served. Here at our Savior's Lutheran Church, we practice an open table communion and invite all of God's people to come to the table, regardless of your background or your baptism or your faith or your denomination. We just ask that you come and receive God's love and forgiveness through the body and blood of Christ. As you come forward, you're welcome to place your offering in the basket if you have brought something to offer in this way. Um, the choir will start us off, and then you'll be invited to follow them down the center aisle. At the stations, please, ex please leave your mask on and extend your hand to receive the wafer, and then pick up a cup of either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is juice. And then after you've left the station, you can remove your mask, consume the elements, and place your empty cup in the baskets on your way back to your seat. We do have allergen-free wafers. If that's something that you need, let us know. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, please say so. And if you are unable to get up from your seat and come to us, please let our ushers know so that we can come and serve you where you are. This is the Lord's table, not ours, and all are welcome here.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Are there any milestones this morning? If I wait long enough, someone will get up. <laughs> you need to turn it on. Uh, my dad will be celebrating his 92nd birthday this week, October 3rd. Woohoo! Milestone! She turned it back off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen Ream, and Jerry and I are celebrating 35 years of wedded bliss. Stand up, Mr. Gerald. <laughs> I suppose as a member of the Faith Partners team, I should stand up and let you all know this, but Tuesday is what's considered my 16th birthday in al -Anon. As of Thursday of last week, I was sober 17 years. Milestone. It's a wonderful celebration. Congratulations to you all. Now let's stand and sing our ascending hymn. Hymn number 881, Let All Things Now Living.
Thank you, Brian.